back, everyone. I'm Kalani Das. This is another music mindfulness talk. Took me a while to get the stream flowing uh, from my studio into YouTube and out to you. And I'm still not sure if it's working, but that's okay. I'm working. <laughs> and it's another Sunday service. Welcome. Thanks for being uh, with me now. And if you're watching this in the future, welcome. This is a community service of the World Drum Club channel and uh, something that is a little bit of a passion of mine. So I want to share with you some of the ideas about how we can leverage the power and potential of music and the mind of the music, the experience of the musician into a mindfulness practice and kind of mash those things together and ask the question, what can mindfulness learn from music? And perhaps what can music learn from mindfulness? I think the two are very similar in lots of ways. And one of the ways that they're very similar is with this thing that we, or idea that we call listening. And in mindfulness, we could use the word attending, uh, which has to do with presence, right? Not birthday presents. <laughs> uh, beingness is like is, is a word I like to use. Beingness. And what does that mean? Beingness is the state of, of being, of feeling, experiencing, and attending to the state of being, right? Which we all take for granted. Uh Maybe not when we're when we're young. I think if you if you want to see what beingness looks like, um, watch a an infant, watch a baby, because they are amazed, right? I mean, I think there I could be projecting. <laughs> I think they might be kind of amazed because they're in this experience now, this this what we call life, right? Birth even though they started a little bit before they got outside. Um, but it's the idea of just being in the state of wonderment, in a state of exploration and sensitivity to one's surroundings, to the, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the feeling, you know, all of that sensory information, um, as well as what we experience inside, which we usually talk about in terms of thoughts and feelings, right? Our thoughts and emotions. So all of that, when we're with that in the moment, we that's what I call beingness, right? And I'm not the only person to use that word, but that's, that's my interpretation. So beingness can be enhanced by paying attention right, to what your in the moment experience is, which comes from your senses, right? Not from your thoughts. And we're going to look at a way you can check yourself to make sure or to just see, you know, where your experience, where your in the moment experience is grounded. Is it grounded in your mind, which is not grounded? <laughs> Or is it grounded in your beingness, your state of being, your sensory, real-time life experience? That's the question. How that relates to mindfulness is mindfulness looks at trying to develop and expand the amount of life, the, the amount of time and, and the, the depth it's not just about time, it's about depth, right? To what degree, to what depth, or let's look at it in every angle, you know, depth, breadth, <laughs> uh, duration. To what degree are we experiencing our life? And inversely, to what degree are we distracted? Because that's what happens, that, that's the thing that pulls us out of experiencing, the thing that pulls us 
out of and away from beingness is thinking uh, or just being distracted, doing something else, right? Rather than being and experiencing and noticing. So what does that have to do with listening? Um, and I want to be clear that I'm not using listening in a literal uh, or explicit um, way that would only point towards hearing, right? Listening doesn't just mean hearing. If you are deaf, you can still listen, right? It means paying attention to what is coming in, basically. So we're, in this sense, when I use the word listening, we're using it in a general way, which just means paying attention to what's coming into your senses. But I do want to kind of ground, since this is music mindfulness and not sports mindfulness or <laughs> smelling mindfulness, it's not, it's not using our other senses so much. I'm just going to use the, uh, the frame or the lens of the musician, which is grounded in sound, which is done through listening. Not exclusively, but. So how can we become better listeners? And um, this also relates to, you know, com having conversations and listening to others, but let's, let's put that part of listening um, uh, to the side for just a minute. And uh, I wanna walk you through a, a, an experience or exercise that you could try, uh, that you could, you could have because all this talking and all the words in the world are not going to do anything for you unless you have some experiences for yourself. All right. Um, I believe that, you know, a spiritual life, a, a life that is uh, deep and broad, not just long, because you can have a long, shallow life. You can have a short, deep, wide life. <laughs> And maybe there's more life experience packed into that life. So it's not about time um, or duration, minutes going by. What you can do is put yourself in a receptive state by noticing, first of all, your state, your body state. Start with the physical. Start with... Um, where you are and you might have some discomfort and that's okay. It's not about, it's not about really being comfortable. It's about just checking in and noticing being aware. So just do that. And then you start to tune in to what's around you and start with listening, but it's not exclusively listening. This is also about what you see, what you touch, what you taste, what you, you know, smell, all of your senses and become curious. But here's the key. See if you can um, notice what's happening in your environment, but resist the temptation to label it or judge it because judging kind of starts with labeling, right? Valuing something over something else or just valuing something to some arbitrary degree, you know, oh, I like that. I don't like that. That's good. That's bad. This is desirable. This is undeserved. The, that's, those are all things that are probably going to move you or they have a lot of potential to move you away from your current experience. Why? Because then you start thinking about them and they start reminding you of other things. And now you're thinking about those things, right? And we all know this happens. And if you're not sure if that happens, try it and see what happens. It happens a lot. So, you know, if you're outside, you could be outside, you could be inside, you could be at home, you could be away, doesn't matter. But just see if you can have a beingness experience, which is accepting and just, just accepting, just be there and, and notice, but without labeling and without judging. So if you hear a bird, just hear the sound. You hear the sound. You hear a bird sound, enjoy it. That's free music. <laughs> it's free entertainment. Um, but don't try to intellectualize it and say, oh, what kind of bird is that? What's he doing? What is it? Do I remember? Oh, I took a class once. Hmm. 
I want, you know, then you get into thinking about the past, right? And you could also get into thinking about other things that have nothing to do with your current experience. And that's the only reason I would suggest that you not get into labeling, you know, or quantifying, especially for you men out there. I realize that is a generalization, but let me just say, especially for you people who tend to be uh, analytically minded and you love numbers and you love talking about, uh, oh, this is this much of that and this thing over here, this and this year and this, you know, measuring, measuring, measuring. Uh, if you're a measurer, then you want to be mindful of that tendency and, and just try to not do it during that experience because it's easy. It's easy to get caught up in the uh, not only attaching present experiences to our past memories, that's very easy. I talked about that last week. Uh, we know that's how our mind works because it works on associations and categorization and, you know, patterns. We're, we're pattern-seeking creatures, so we always want to compare things. We compare our current experience to all of our past experiences, and we pull all that stuff into the present, but then we're distracted because now we're attending to the past instead of being. So what, I, what I'm suggesting is that you have a present experience, an experience in sensing the present experience. Uh, and the way we do that is to try to notice when our mind wants to label, uh, quantify, perhaps value, have a value judgment or judgment based on valuing, you know, better than, worse than, better, you know, this, that, uh, categorizing things. All of that is fine. That Those are all human tendencies. You know, none of those things are wrong. However, that those things don't promote uh, in the momentness. That's, that's all. There's a time and a place for, the, for that, for, you know, labeling, categorizing, valuing. That's part of the human experience. So that, that's not wrong. But the point is we want to increase our capacity to be here now, right? So this is a, a little bit of an of a experiment and an exercise you can try. So just, you don't have to go anywhere special either. It's not about going to that one spot you know, and doing this during the sunset, although that's nice, nothing wrong with that, but you don't have to do that. All right. I want to be really clear you all. And I, I did mention last week that I was going to talk about this, what I call the illusion of place, which is this idea that uh, in order to have, you know, the most spiritual experience or an ex or a spiritual experience or a better spiritual experience, I need to, I need to be over here. Right? I need to be in this building or in this spot, in this underneath this tree, on top of this mountain, in this country, <laughs> um, saying words in this language, burning this incense, you know, all that, wearing this hat, wearing this, wearing that, you know. No. Okay. Again, those are extras. If you have the means, if you prefer, you know, if you want to be wherever you want to be, but just know that it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's not about, it's not about that. And I know I really hope that um, you get that because if you don't, you could be preventing yourself. Uh, it's kind of like spiritual perfectionism, you know, oh, I can, I'm going to do this, but I have to get to you know, that mountain over there. And if I can't, I'm stuck. Mm -mm. You're not stuck. Everywhere in every, the whole world, you know, the whole universe is the same thing. It's all part of the same thing. Yeah. There's different shapes here and there. There's different, you know, the, the world, there's different views that you can have, of course. So technically you can be in a different place, but they're all equally valid. Everywhere on earth is equally valuable, equally spiritual. Every person has the same potential. 
Don't get caught up in the, oh, I'm not worthy uh, thinking, or I need to have these clothes or be over there or, you know, sit at this person's feet. Um, nothing wrong with learning from people, but you don't need to be anywhere special to do what I'm talking about. So this is for you. Take ownership of your own experiences and just know that you can do this anywhere, anytime, uh, from an alley in a city to a field in the country, top of the mountain, under the sea, anywhere. Listen, pay attention, experience what you experience and try to resist labeling, categorizing, judging. And judging comes in the form of aversion and attraction, right? Like the Buddha said, really the root of suffering, right? Aversion is, no, I don't want, get that away from me. I don't like that. I want less of that. Attraction is, or desire is, oh, I need that. I want more of that. Bring that closer. Bring it over here. Give it to me, <laughs> right? Um, both of those things will also, both of those kinds of relationships that you create, you, you create those feelings for yourself, right? Those thoughts and feelings for you. Um, of course, they might come into your awareness. It might become a habit that you adopted based on the values of other people. But still, in that moment, in the moment where you are having this experience for yourself, um, there's no one there except you creating any kind of aversion or attraction to anything. All right. Now, of course, I'm not talking about an, an avert, aversion to danger. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Of course, if you see a swarm of killer bees headed your way, that would be survival, run away. <laughs> you, you have my permission to feel an aversion to danger, right? But we're not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just normal kind of everyday environment, environmental things um, that you're attending to. And um, getting back to why, all right, so you got that, right? That's, that's what I recommend. Just try it and see what happens. And again, even if you feel like you're not good at it, don't label it and judge yourself, all right? Because that's part of, you know, what, what you're trying not to do. So just accept, just notice. It's just, a no, it's just noticing. How am I at doing this? All right, where does music come in? Well, of course, uh, the musician practices listening and attending to what's going on in the moment as part of being a musician. That's what we do. That's one of the main skills, hopefully. It's one of the main skills. And also, I have to say, my experience as a professional musician and then a music educator and then music therapist, when I worked more, when I started working as a music therapist, my attention and listening skills took a big leap up because it's very important to be very connected and attending to my clients um, who are in that moment, other, my fellow, they are my fellow music makers because we're having a musical experience together. And I'm there in very much, you know, in support of them. So it's really important for me to tune in with a kind of laser focus and be with them uh, and follow them and, you know, track what they're doing musically, track what they're doing with their body and their face and their, you know, all of the music that they make. And there is this term called musicking, musicking with a K, king, that is this idea of not just making music as in playing an instrument, but being musical, being a musical, uh, being a musical being. In other words, all the music that is happening, you know, inside of you, outside, between people, you know, what's created from this person plus this person, something else, right? Um, all of that is musicking and it's being creative and being musical. Um, that, um, 
idea of that practice uh, exploded for me as a music therapist because that's part of also it's part of the the ethos or the requirements or the you know the values of the music therapist. Um, but just as a musician, at whatever level, if you're if you are a musician or you have an affinity to music, you can understand there's a connection there and there's an intimacy with music. One of my teachers, Alex Acuna, when I was in college, I was taking, uh, Alex is a hand percussionist and drummer from Peru. And he was telling me stories about how when he grew up, he'd be on the, you know, in Peru playing and there'd be a group of people playing. And if somebody came in and they were not in tune, you know, kind of honoring the music, uh, that person could be kicked out really quick uh, in a very sudden way, a very aggressive way, because he said, when people are playing music together, it's an intimate relationship. And he, and he said, it's like making love. It's like that intimate. It's a very intimate relationship. You're very close. You are giving, you're taking, you're vulnerable, you're in the moment, and there's a there's a dance that's going on. And so as musicians, you know, we, we get that. Um, I think it could be uh, a similar experience to even um, dancing, physically dancing, or even a team sport, right? You're in sync. And right now the Olympics are going on. We see so many talented athletes. A lot of the athletes that are on teams, you see this kind of intimacy, these, this bond of paying attention and being in the moment. However, I do want to reiterate that music is not a competition, right? Even though there are music competitions, music itself uh, is an art form and it's a humanity. It's a humanity. Music is, it's about the human experience and it's an expression of the human experience. It's how we create art from our impulses and thoughts and feelings, and we transmit those ideas to others. Um, so listening, practicing listening in music will help um, condition and bolster your capacity for attending to your environment, you're having that sensational experience, the sensory experience, so you can have a sensational life. Because, um, you know, your life is what you experience. That's really your life. You know, that's what we call reality, is what you experience. Not what you think, even though people think that, what they think is reality, it's not. People, what you think is your opinion and your perception. And that changes from person to person, we know that. It changes from, even from group to group, country to country. Um, it changes based on your experiences and your, but your, ex, your perspective and your, you know, your thoughts and opinions and feelings about your experiences, the experience itself is what is real to the degree you are experiencing it <laughs> and not distracted. All right. So what is, what's reality? We'll talk about this in another, at another time, but what's reality? Reality is what happens. It's what you experience. Do people have different realities? Sure. Because they're experiencing different things. We like to argue about what's real, but you know what? nobody's experience is the same. So do you want to spend a lot of time arguing about that <laughs> with other people? If we want to experience more um, in the momentness, that means we need to do uh, not only, you know, do things that move us into the present, like listening, paying attention to what's happening in the moment. Like right now, I hear the little fan in my computer. 
Of course, I was hearing this. I was just playing. But I, even now, I can pause. I'm in my studio. I hear the, the little shh, the noise coming from my computer. I hear a little bit of sound coming from outside the window over here. I could tune into just where I am right now and have a beingness experience. So what you experience is, is one thing, but then how do you preserve that? How do you protect it? What's the bubble, you know, what's this, the invisible force field that you can put around that? That is, here comes a thought about what I'm experiencing. It's a label. Oh, it's a judgment. Oh, okay. It's, uh, you know, categorizing. It's, oh, here's a big one. It's a memory. <laughs> Here comes a memory. All right. I, I, I see it at the door. I see it. But it's not coming in. All right. So that's your job. That's what mindfulness is. It's being mindful of what's, you know, it's being mindful of your human tendencies and just kind of redirecting, you know, managing them. That's what it means. It doesn't mean, you know, shutting everything out. Now, real quick. Couple more things before we go. How do we, uh, what are some other ways? What are some lazy ways that we get to the same point where we're not thinking about, you know, a lot of other stuff? Well, one really lazy way or easy way is you take drugs, right? That's what drugs do. Ask, ask somebody who takes drugs. Why do you take drugs? Because I feel, oh, it's great. I'm not worrying about anything. Because you've numbed yourself. Now, I'm not saying nobody should ever take drugs. I'm not judging that. I'm saying, why do you take them? Quick way there, right? It's easy. Talk to people about heroin sometime. Any opioid, right? What do you like about it? Ah, does the job. There's a big downside to that. <laughs> Taking that route, all right? So... What we're talking about here is getting to hopefully the same place, but doing the work. You got to do some work. You could take the quick way, but that we all know there's a price. There's a bigger price than just the price you paid for the drugs. There's a human price. There's a spiritual price to that and a physical price. Lots of prices come with that. So yeah, it's an option. What's another way? Um, Extreme experiences, right? Extreme this, extreme that, sports or whatever. That's fine. You're distracting yourself completely, right? Now, again, I'm for sports. There's nothing wrong with doing sports, but why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you can't sit still? And when you sit in a quiet place, you your mind goes nuts? Because if you're doing the sport to manage to, to distract yourself from your own thinking again. You can't do extreme sports all the time. You have to, you have to rest. You have to stop sometimes. So yeah, you could do the sports, but when you're not doing the sports, what's your plan? Nothing wrong with doing extreme sports. It's why are you doing it? Do you need to do that to feel at peace? Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of sports too. I love, I love, I ride my motorcycles. I play golf. I used to do rugby, lacrosse, gymnastics. Um, took a hang gliding lesson or course. I love it. I'd love to go skydiving. Um, but I'm not doing it to escape my thoughts. So, the you know, distraction, uh, numbing, some people, I think, just get in fights all the time. <laughs> They're very combative, always arguing with people. Um, some people might develop some sort of um, obsession or compulsion, you know, to focus on something. So they're not with their thoughts. Um, even, and again, I'm not saying we shouldn't do these things. I love reading. But if you're constantly reading as a form of escapism, from your own thoughts, you know, if it's escapism, that's, that should just, that's a little red flag. So nothing wrong with anything, doing anything, but it's why are you doing it?
Are you doing it to escape? Or could you spend a little bit of time developing some skills, like I'm talking about here, some listening, noticing the thoughts coming in, recognizing what they are, when you need those thoughts, when you don't. You don't need your mind to be giving you all of these little things all the time. And it's okay, it's gonna keep kind of spinning those things out, but you don't have to attend to them. You don't have to divert your attention completely and focus on them. You can kind of uh, say, okay, we'll put that on the shelf right now. We'll put that over here. Thank you very much. Put that over here. It's gonna be there later. All of your thoughts, like <laughs> somebody once said at a retreat, you can leave all of your regrets at the door. When you enter the space, they'll be waiting for you when you leave. All right. So you kind of use that if that's helpful. Use that idea. Yeah, we all have thoughts. We all have memories. We all have stories. You know, we, we, as we go through our day, we're, we're going to be reminded of things. That's okay. Um, but you know what? We don't have to attend to them right now. They'll be waiting for us later <laughs> if you want to mull them over a little bit more. Um, you can do that. You're free. You can use your mind however you want. So your homework uh, is to find any place where you can sit maybe five, ten minutes, maybe more. And just be, just have an experience, just listen. And you're not, you know, again, you're just, just experience it without judgment. Maybe there's a little wonderment that comes into play, but it's not about valuing uh, one thing over another. It's just, it's, it's experiencing, experiencing. And maybe you'll feel a sense of peace and comfort in that. Maybe you'll feel uh, a little bit of enhanced, what we call oneness. The instrument I'm playing today, by the way, is a tongue drum, wooden tongue drum, made by Joa and Michael Thiel at Hardwood Music Company. This was a gift uh, from many years ago, many, many moons ago, <laughs> many years ago. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll be doing uh, music mindfulness talks. I'm shooting for every Sunday at 11 Pacific time. If my computer cooperates, and my gear cooperates with my computer, I'll see you at 11, or if it doesn't, hopefully it'll happen a little bit later. And if there's a delay in the future, you can sit and have an experience in presence. By the way, if you really wanna frustrate somebody, say, you can start waiting in five minutes, and then just notice the expression of perplexion. <laughs> <laughs> that results. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Kalani Das. This has been a talk um, on listening in the Music Mindfulness series. If you'd like to connect with me more, you can visit my music website at kalanimusic.com. Uh, the Evolve podcast links are at kalanidas.com and also on iTunes, the Evolve podcast. There's a series there, over 20 episodes. I want to thank Cameron Gray for allowing me to use his amazing artwork for uh, the Evolve podcast and this series. ParableVisions.com is his website. You can find out more there. Um, and if you like this and you'd like to learn more about music and support this work, uh, you can visit me over at Patreon.com slash Kalani. But whatever you do, I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a great practice wherever you are. And uh, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for tuning in.